Dudes, what's happening? It's Trent, and uh, welcome to my living room. Uh, the expensive, big expensive camera crew and staff are all on vacation presently. So it's just me with my MacBook and uh, headset recording device. That's what you get. But thank you for tuning in anyway for this uh, Master Doe concept art illustration with commentary by yours truly. What I wanted to do was really push myself. I wanted to do something where I take an old character and give them a fresh coat of paint, a little redesign, a little bit of something special, something extra. And uh, I recorded the whole process as I do like to do. And I wanted to share it with you with a little bit of thoughts and uh, notes on what I was thinking when I put it together. So I'll try to also answer some of the questions as we move along. But you likely didn't tune in to look at me. So let's look at some drawing. All right, let's draw some master dough. The first thing that I like to do when I start a painting is really decide what my intentions are. Intentions are the yardstick by which I use to decide when to stop adding detail or stop drawing. And uh, my intentions with this piece were to literally take an old character from my webcomic, uh, Twilight Monk. Uh, as you saw, I, I actually pulled up imagery from my old comic and I was using it as my basis for my starting point of where to begin. What is my goal? And my goal was really just to get back to what I got into drawing for. When I was in sixth grade, I used to just love to draw Kung Fu characters, the street fighter characters and just badass Kung Fu warriors, you know? And uh, so I wanted to take everything that I've learned from all these years of experience of drawing and, and what kind of pieces excite people and, uh, and everything I had learned from doing comic books and everything I'd learned from doing concept art and games to kind of create the culmination of all of these different disciplines and, and techniques that I feel like will create a very exciting image for this character to really sell the character. This isn't a kind of a piece that you would use to build a model off of, although there is a lot of information here, and you technically could if I did a back view as well and a side view with callouts. If this were for a concept art for a 3D modeler, I would have those details, but Really, the intention is just to do a fancy schmancy, really sell the character kind of a drawing. I asked myself as a starting point, what are the coolest aspects of this character and how can I amplify them Mad Max style? You'll notice that I borrow a lot of details from previous drawings that I had done, such as the Kung Fulio uh, Mao Tenza painting. Uh, there were things such as the gourd and other trinkets and rings and bracelets and lockets and beads that I just already had rendered before. I don't need to completely draw them again. In fact, I'm building a bit of a library now of my own pieces. It's sort of a photo bashing technique, but using my own drawings or pieces of my drawings rather compounded in modular density. By the way, nothing is real. It's all an illusion. So keep that in mind at all times. If you begin to doubt your reality, remember to keep your hands and arms inside of the vehicle at all times. Sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. If you find yourself doing the same patterns, if you find yourself repeating yourself the same way for a number of years, doing the same approach, the same technique, the same tactic. At times like this, it's a good idea to try to forget yourself as much as possible. A good, a good technique in terms of Photoshop anyway, with drawing, is to pull up some reference material. And, and what I mean by that is not take from something else directly. I think that there's a little bit too much of that these days but rather pull just that singular element that gives you a new neurological connection in your mind, something that is a pattern that you're unfamiliar with. You've never tried to draw that pattern before. You've never tried to draw that shape before or implement that shape into your designs before. Maybe you always fall back on drawing you know, women that are a certain body type, or you always fall back on drawing men who have the same kind of faces, the same noses, the same brow, the same shape of head, the same height, the same build. Maybe try to really push yourself to think differently. Try to design a character who is very roundish and overweight, or try to draw a character who is very old, but but give it a little bit of a twist. What is something that you do like to do that you could mix in with that? What is the familiar that you're comfortable with about 20% of really challenging yourself with something completely out of your comfort zone? You know, And that's the way I try to approach 
every piece that I do. So there were a few comments that came in, a few questions that people had, and I wanted to address them. Uh, let's see, Tide Midnight asks, can you make a video on how to make anime eyes? Um, I think that there are about a million and a half of those on YouTube already. And uh, I'm not personally a teacher. It's not something that I specifically do. Every now and then I add a little bit of tutorialization to my videos and I do enjoy helping people. It's kind of why I started a channel, but if you look around on YouTube, there are millions of people that already show you how to draw ducks or animals or eyes or hands or feet. The most popular way to get clicks is to just draw characters from existing popular franchises. Oh, here's a uh, Tracer drawing, or here's a Farrah drawing, and you know, that's fine and good, and those are great to help people. It's awesome that there's so much help in the community. For a while, I was doing a lot of these sort of how to draw tutorials, and but I realized at some point I was just creating clickbait. I, I was just trying to make things that would make more people click on my stuff, and I don't want to cheapen that. This uh, I don't want to cheapen this channel. That's not what this is about. But pretty much, if you ever see me do a painting of another character, I'm going to be redesigning them. I'm going to be reinventing them in some way. I'm going to bring something new to those characters because. What's the point if it's just to get clicks? That's kind of hollow. I don't really want my channel to become some product that is uh, deceptively there just to try to get clicks so that I can get advertising revenue. Uh, who am I kidding? I want them clicks. Give them clicks. All right, you start out by drawing a line across the top like that and make it really fat on the side so that that's where the eyelashes would swoop out. You draw an ellipse in the middle, fill that top part in with black because that's a shadow, gray in the middle part of the pupil so that when you add your specular, it like looks nice and shiny. Copy that, duplicate it over, put it over to the left side, make sure that your reflection is on the same side and both, bing, bang, and a boom. You got your anime eyes. Thank you for your question, Tide Midnight. You're a rock star and practically a celebrity in the comment section. Also, all of the characters from Overwatch are already awesome. I don't need to redesign them. All right, next up. This one is really just a comment, but Christopher Hogan says, it's a weird time we live in. The sincerity of our soul is gone, but I really enjoyed this video. Well, Christopher, I agree with you, and we can thank YouTube for that. It's also my favorite video. Commenting on the Juby's Rock House video, Zeltos asks, what did you read or watch to learn all of this game creation stuff? Also, any books for lower level artists? Great question, Zeltos. The first thing that I would suggest if you want to get into programming is either dig into Unity and use some of their game creation kits or plugins, uh, the other thing that I would recommend is to check out Game Maker Studio. Several games such as Hyperlight Drifter were actually programmed and created entirely in Game Maker Studio. There are tremendous tutorials for uh, such a program, uh, one of which I highly recommend is a instructor by the name of Benjamin on Udemy uh, for Game Maker Language. Uh, he also goes by the name Heartbeast on YouTube. I will put a link to his videos in the text field below the video for you. But it is hardcore stuff to learn to program. Not easy. You will either hate it or you'll start dreaming in code. Commenting on the Rival Knox video, Skylar Knight says, Please have every video like this, hearts. Unfortunately, Skylar Knight might be the only one that wants that but I can't be sure. Wink, wink. Hearts emoticon. To the same video, Meet Me Outside says, how long can you keep that voice up? It sounds like you're scratching your throat with a cheese grater. But I think you'd be surprised. It's actually my natural voice. It's really difficult to keep up the dweeby trend voice that you usually hear. That's the challenge. Thank you for your comments, Skylar Knight, and meet me outside. It's also my favorite video. So there were a bunch of questions. I wish I could answer them all. Some of them are a lot more serious, serious businessy. The business of making games, the business of making art, and uh, and doing this as a job. And uh, 
I don't know. I, I do want to answer them, but they're not, just like, not as much fun. So I mostly just put them in, like I'll actually respond to them in the comments. You guys are, you guys are pretty good co-pilots if you stuck it out through, through that little bit, that little tidbit there um, of, of potential, potential negativity, which we course corrected in due time. Because doing a YouTube video with you is pretty much like a drive along. It's like you're riding, you know, shotgun with me on my way to work here, you know? Maybe we'd stop off for some Carl's Jr. or something, you know? No bun, can't eat the wheat. That stuff's poison. So we made it, dudes, we made it past the uh, the boring part of the, the illustration. Most of the uh, liner is kind of coming into place. We're getting pretty funky with our details. I wanted to push the detail level beyond what I had done before. I had a color version. Uh, that I had done for a pitch packet because I was pitching Twilight Monk as an animated series for a little while until I realized that uh, animation is dead in the U.S. I, there's no way to do a kung fu animated series in the U.S. because most directors are afraid of it, apparently. I'm calling you out, Robert Rodriguez. I don't know. He would not. <laughs> Yeah, that would be cool, actually. <laughs> really badass. Uh, Rodriguez, Twilight Monk, Kung Fu anime. Anyway, um, and so I, I use some of the colors from that, but mostly what you're seeing is my usual process. I do this all the time. Bing, bang, a boom. I'm using gradient map coloring. I don't even actually use colors or overlay layers so much at this stage. I'm just using those gradient maps. And I got plenty of videos on how to do that. You guys have seen me. I'm singing the same old song. I've been saying this for years, man. Here's how you use gradient maps. Here's how you use them. I did 10 videos on how to use gradient maps. Find them. If you want the shortcut, they're in my Gumroad box sets. So go pick those up. But anyways, uh, that's my starting point. Uh, I keep all my line art. And then I, it's just a question of pushing that back and pulling it forward. Not really sure exactly. I don't have like an exact process or percentages of, oh, it's this much opacity or this much colorization on that layer or anything like that. There's no scientific method to it. A lot of it is really just years and years of practicing. But some things that are uh, more scientific about it, dig into your light sources. Uh, Mark Brunet from Cube Brush did an excellent tutorial on this recently. What he suggests is try to imagine where your, as if each light had its own eye, what could that eye see? If you were looking at it from there, then you would know how much that eye sees. And wherever that eye would see is where it gets affected by that color of light. And now don't get me wrong, I'm breaking a lot of rules in this shot for the sake of readability and uh, really just because I can. <laughs> You've been doing it long enough, you can fake it till you make it, and then you kind of get to break a lot more of the rules. I know I said I'm not a teacher, but I'm gonna give you a little something. Uh, sometimes you can just use a darkened layer uh, over your colored line art. And then what you get is uh, it, it impacts that blending between those two colors in an interesting way, and it blends them differently than if you do a multiply layer. Also, it doesn't darken the whole thing out. A multiply layer will just make everything almost black if you keep layering it great for putting in shadow color. Most people may not have noticed the spiritual Where's Waldo effect that seems to be going on in some of my pieces recently. There is a substantial amount of symbolism and hidden elements in a lot of my paintings recently. This is likely due to some kind of either neurological problem or it could be related to boredom. I think uh, I've after 20 years of doing the same sort of thing, I wanted to get a shot in the arm. I want to see something new. I want to explore things that I'd never explored before, see things through a different lens, you know, but it all works out, you know. If you want to put your finger on the exceptional and a consistency among the exceptional, it's always those runners that keep running after the double marathon. It's always those athletes that continue to push themselves well beyond even that which was expected of them or even what was already previously established as the greatest that they could accomplish. And then they run for miles beyond that. And that's what I've been striving to do with each piece that I do. Doing this level of detail for me is actually more meditative. So it's almost like I'm saying I'm meditating harder than I've ever meditated before. 
And if you can grok that, if you can wrap your head around that, then you got it all figured out, baby. So that's the Master Doe redesign. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you do have comments or if you have suggestions on things that you'd like to see me draw more of, please drop those in the comment section below. And if you're an artist and you're interested in seeing a little bit more of my process peeking over my shoulder uh, for much lengthier meteor videos where you can see the layer effects and what kind of brushes I'm using and all that fancy uh, mystical Photoshop trickery that I use to fake my career as an artist that you can use as well. Uh, pop on over to Gumroad. Uh, you can see the link in the uh, text field below and uh, you can buy my box sets of tutorials. All that stuff is there for you guys. Until next time, remember to redesign your old characters with passion. All right, dudes. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll catch you all manana bon. Ciao.